Welcome back to Face It TV, guys. I'm DDK. It seems like we have lost Thor and his uh, computer is constantly crashing, so it's just me for now. And we have Exostana now, who are facing off against GamePub. GamePub comprising of three Serbians, a Macedonian, and a Bosnian. Beautiful mix of players. And they've got some interesting results under their belt in the past. Exostana seemed in a, it seemed in a kind of a weakened state, perhaps. I mean, no one really, I don't think anyone really expected Wizards, the Spaniards, to come out with such a powerful first half and you know powering it through to a victory 16 to 10 against Astana Exasana. so just having the knife round here underway between these teams and it looks like it is the tournament of nukes because we've got another nuke coming up it seems so if we uh, dive into the game we will see oh looks I guess a player just dropped so I had to call off going live straight away there so, guys, remember, in, in the downtime, you can check out the Face It platform. The whole idea is to just provide awesome tournaments all the time. There's loads of tournaments on there now as well, and you'll see loads of points cups as well. And all those points can be redeemed for the prizes on the platform. Even a car, if you fancy, fancy a car, if you fancy uh, grinding those points cups, it is a reality, it's possible. But it seems like they are going for the restart here, and they are going to be jumping into the game. So another nuke. Interesting to see, as we can really compare what we just saw, which was Astana kind of having a terrible time on Nuke. And they're getting the same map again. So, what is going to happen this time? They, they are not going to want to lose the pistols this, this, uh, this time around. I see a great little movement coming outside there from a couple of players. And, oh my god, KGR. Dozier is never going to feel the same again after that. And... Looks like we're going to a 3 on to a 4 situation. They have made their way down to the lower bomb site. And wow, John is, a jo, a Joe Ninja, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. We'll work on that as we go through the cast. But he managed to do some excellent play there to really hold off this aggression. Exostana, not going to make it happen. They had a, a good run of the lower site there. But that stop from Joe Ninja was just too, too good. Making it... Another situation where Astana's going to lose a pistol round. Not good. Not good at all for X Astana. And having a buy now. You know, YNK, you know, he's just opting to keep that pistol. Obviously, he wants to be able to afford an AWP for that outside. And here goes a pre-nade into the radio room. Not going to catch any players at all. We can see, you know, some CZ-75s uh, on Kucha. And mix of pistols going on. So Exostana looking to do something here very soon. They're just all lining up. Going to rush through the hut into Emmy, who just takes down three of them, easily gets that triple. And Joe Ninja looking for Dozier. Dozier does pass by his vision by a pixel. But Dozier, his life is going to expire very shortly. So it looks to be that GamePub is going to be securing a 2-0 situation, most likely they're going to have the 3-0 as well if Exostana are unable to have a buy that they feel is sufficient for the next round. And those, yeah, he is just waiting because he's he knows that they might get a little bit aggressive. Maybe he can get that kill. And that can actually have a, a big impact if you're able to get at least one kill. Maybe as we get closer and closer to the end of the round as well, if, like if he can actually save it as well, although I doubt GamePub is going to do that. That can be pretty huge from time to time. And But Dozier... Looks like he's going to start going on the move, looking for frags. He's realized that game pub, they're playing, they're basically playing this completely correctly. They're not hunting for the frags. Oh, that was beautiful from Dozier, but but that's okay. YNK was actually the one player that didn't actually invest in the weapon that round. So YNK, not so bad to take him down. And he's going to have to just fill up on an M404 there. So game pub 2 to 0, Exostana. Moving into a buy, a couple of Galils in the mix. No grenades, really, just two grenades on them. So, what are they going to do with this? We're going to see an outside push. Got a lot of movement going on there now. As here come the pre -nays. That was fantastic there from GamePub. Just look how much it stopped Exostani. You could really see they wanted to get some more ground there initially. But those grenades really put the halt to that. And look at this YNK predicting the player boosting up to silo. Joe Ninja on the door duty. Right here. So things are slowing down again. On two to zero scoreline and 
Game Pub looking to make this 3 to 0. No players dropped just yet, but Kooch is low. He's going to go down. The trade coming in from Angel. And they're going to be making that push outside. Tr uh, they want to make it count here. Moving across CT main, moving down secret. KGR has all the information here for his team. And Game Pub, they have to react successfully here. So as we just switch around to the bomb carrier, we can see exactly what is going on over here for Markov with that bomb. Going to be making the move down to the lower site. And here they go. They're going to run into Joe Ninja looking for the heads. Doesn't find them. And that is a massive result for Exasana who can continue the war path towards that lower bomb site. Dozier trying to take control of ramp here. Pushing Nino back. But Nino... He's in a decent spot regardless. His teammates all around him. Here goes Angel though, taking down one player. Just marking the vents as his. And it's a 2-1-2 two -two now. Brilliant flank there from Dozier. He's really, Dozier really has been doing wonderfully on the kind of flanking position, the flanking role here for Exostana. But regardless, Game Pub are going to be with another round there as the game does get paused, as a player has dropped, unfortunately. So we have yet to understand why exactly that may be. Yesterday's tournament ran very smoothly. And also, if you guys missed the CS Forever event that was at the Meltdown Esports Bar in London, you can actually catch the VODs of that on Facecom. And that's going to be available for you. Had good teams like Fnatic, NIP, and X, Astana as well. And so hopefully they manage to get their player in. Uh, CSGO is a scene where we do experience a lot of delays, so I think people are, are very used to that. So still without explanation as to why this one is, unfortunately. But it seems as if Exostana are having a lot of issues so far from, from the looks of things. I mean, the last game as well, they managed to go down right at the start of the game um, on, on that pistol round, and they lost a lot of momentum. They got, let's say, I think... I think the first round came around five, six rounds in, uh, the, the second buy, uh, buy round for them, and they managed to take that one down, but then they just got steamrolled again until they got the second round. And I think they pulled three rounds or so in the first half. It, just, it was just a mess, really, for them. And this is not the way to really kind of redeem yourself uh, so far. I mean, looking at it right now, we're seeing you know Angel and Dozier topping the scoreboard, even though it's so early for them. Uh, they are topping the scoreboard, and we, from Dozier and Angel, we saw some great plays last match. I'm not sure what it is with Exostana, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to get this kicking off very soon. And uh, again, I'm going to urge you guys to check out the platform. Got a lot of cool things going on lately on there. Lots of upgrades to the system. I remember a long time ago because, you know, of course, I work for Faceit. I was I was there at the beginning. I remember the days when we were beta testing, just being able to join directly into the servers. And so every time you would press the play button, it, like. I don't know, we'd all be fist bumping each other as soon as like it actually worked. And then eventually we've moved to this point where the functionality's been improved massively. Loads of features are getting implemented and the, the service is actually improving a lot. Seeing a lot more activity as well. So guys need to get on it. Try it again. If you, if you tried it you know, a month ago or something, try it again now. See if uh, you like the changes that have been implemented as uh, things are being worked on constantly here. So again, uh, no news. OK, there we go. Wine can actually connecting up here onto the counter-terrorist side. So hopefully we can jump in right now. The readies are being thrown around. So we're going to be able to see if Exostana are able to actually do something here, bring this back, or whether they are, for some reason today, helpless on DE Nuke. And if GamePub managed to actually take a win here against Exostana, we may not even see Exostana even in the playoffs tomorrow, which of course NIP and Kick, they're already in those playoffs. They're already already waiting to play the two potential teams that may arise from this cup. So looking at the situation right now, it's just an awful charge from Exostana. They're gonna just line up outside. But Joe Ninja, not going to grab too much more than one frag just yet, though. In a very terrible position. Hard to back away from that spot. Once your position has been compromised, it's pretty hard to get out there. But he's got the support from KGR and Emmy chiming in to take down three in at once. And Exiton have really got sandwiched there right at the end. So Game Pub reacting fast, rotating well, communicating strongly to make it 4-0.
Going to see our Byron now for Exostana coming in here. Let's see what they can do with it. All AKs. All AKs. So far, generally speaking, we, we haven't really seen a weakness from GamePub. It is early days, but I do like what they're doing so far. Here we go, though. They're going to make the rush into the upper bomb site. Emmy sprays down too. That is a huge loss, but Doja at the very least controlling outside. Markov working on upper as well. Three on two at this point. Angel and Dozier left standing for Exostana. But Game Pub have brilliant positions here. One in the vents, one on the upper site, and one up on the catwalk. They have a really good spread, really good cover, really good potential to get information as well, which is incredibly important. You need to know as soon as possible what's actually going on here. So we can really see things slow down as Exus on them, trying to make use of the time that they have, trying to coordinate here. They're going to bust into the upper site. Here they go. Angel and Dozier together. So one on two now as Dozier falls. Angel looking for that man in CT main. Here he goes, the one on one. Nino's going to win it. Very well played from him. I like that cute little maneuver that he pulled in the fight as well. He kind of knew where uh, he, uh, Dozier was, so he kind of shouldered the angle to get Dozier to start spraying and then re-peaked and he was accurate whilst Dozier was significantly less accurate, you know, giving a bit of an edge in the fight right at the end. Very cute little trick, but effective. And five to zero now. Game Pub doing what uh, what Wizards were doing. They're starting to just decimate. This was kind of the point, though, where Exasana started to bring it back in the last match. At least getting one round. And Edren opening up with a fantastic long-range shot onto YNK. Here he is with a drop into CT main. That is a huge position to control. And KG are going to fall at window. So it looks like... Exostana back to their old tricks. And, you know, at least locking down the ramp room. But the problem for for them is right now is that they've got only two players left after that little exchange. And they just don't have the coverage. And Exostana, it's hard to actually pinpoint exactly where they are, considering they've been hitting many different positions at once. And here we have Kucha up on the catwalk. Very, very strong position for him to hold to help his teammates secure that upper. He's got the cover for the planter, Markolov. So the bomb's going to go down without any hassle. Bomb has been planted. So we have the CT players, Nino and Emmy, creeping around on the outside. You can see Nino there on the ramp room. Emmy, CT main. They want to try to perhaps catch some exit frags. They are not really thinking about a retake here. It's just going for the save. If we look at the money situation at the moment, it is looking quite grim for our terrorist side, Exostana. So a uh, must situation for them, of course, to win this round. And that's what they did after that buy. And you can see that Game Pub are going to be OK to actually put in the buy themselves. But actually, Emmy not going to be able to hold on to that rifle, which is very unfortunate. It's not going to be able to drop for a teammate now. But he can at least afford an M31S if he's, if he's got that. Just has, barely has enough money. He's going to go for the Famous, though, so he can stock up with grenades. And you can see that the buy is a bit strained for Game Pub. If Exostana managed to actually win this round, they're going to start to, to really hurt the economy of Game Pub. And that's going to allow them to force some Ecos, give them some extra rounds. And before you know it, they're, they're even. But it really kind of counts on this round. Let's see if they're able to make a mark here. If Game Pub can actually shut this down, then. It, the same principle goes for them, more or less. It's going to be an extra few rounds, forcing some Ecos. Should be some easy pickups. But here comes the movement outside. Kucha just tapping down Joe Ninja and YNK. And here we go, Nino. Trying to play it slow on the ramp. There is some movement there, just re-smoking it. Just lock onto that position, just hold it down. Kucha, who's had a huge round so far is moving on down towards that lower position. KGR, though, looks as if he's ready for this. They've kind of deduced what's happening. Nino just snaps off the neck of Adren. Angel getting a trade onto Nino, though. Things are looking terrible for Game Pub. Equalizer, though, as Markov traverses through to that ladder room, through the ramp. Emmy is left waiting. He's got the Famas. They're both pretty low, though. So here he goes, dropping into the vents. 
He's going to find one player, but Kucha executes Emmy, and he's going to win the round for Exus Honor. That was a huge, huge win for them. Again, now we're going to see pistols coming out from Game Pub. As we see the rifles and AWP in the hands of Dozier. Let's check out the scoreboard here. We can see, of course, Emmy, you know, he's putting some great plays topping that scoreboard. And 5 to 2 the score. So, should see Existana bringing this back now. Maybe even equalizing in the next three rounds. Bringing it to a 5 on 5, a 5 5 situation on the, the round score. Dozier trying to get a little bit cute with the AWP there, pushing that T red before falling back. Looks like they're, g they're gathering up for a push here. And let's see how they go for this. They just really want to avoid a stack or something, like running into a stack or something from Game Pub. And here you go. Great little shot there from Dozier, missing his teammate. So they've got control now of Ram. They're going to move it on down towards that lower site. It is just the standard for them now, just holding on against the pistoling players. Oh wow, great shots coming in. What is this we're seeing? There's just one left, it's Nino, not able to finish it off, but three players immediately dropped on the side of Existana. Almost, that round almost blew up right at the end. Very volatile. And that's actually quite a, an important factor actually, because a lot of you know money is actually gained by at least making those pistol frags. And of course, the, the reinvesting into the weapons and armor and grenades for Existana means that they definitely hurt the economy there despite losing the round, which will help them out quite a bit. You can see that if if uh, our terror side lose this round, they can probably scrap together a buy next round, but after that it's gonna be it's gonna be really difficult for them again. Adren actually pushing aggressively into Hut here and there's no one directly above it, so they can't really shoot him in the legs and punish him. So Adren actually, you know, taking a little bit of, ri of a risk, but he's gained some position, gained some info about where Game Pub are actually holding the site from. He falls back though, getting smoked out of the position. And that is a smart move to make as Markov goes for the peak here on Rab. This is, would be a great pickup to try to take down one player here, really weaken the lines. But YNK is going to prevent that great headshot, re-smoke in from his teammate. Beautiful play coming in there. But actually, that, that re-smoke wasn't quite perfect. And Adren enables him to get a one-on-one -on -one when really it should have been a one-on-two. And YNK smoking the ramp, falling back to the window. And Adren marching on through, looking for the headshot onto YNK. Doesn't find it. Kucha, though, with the flank here in the ladder room. And he finds his player, KGR. So right now, Exasana really off the individual, the back of the individual plays. That's what's really making this round happen for them, but it's just Adren left alive at this point. As we can see him taking down YNK, one on one. And oh, he's got the grenade in his hand. Joe Ninja is laughing. There's no way he's messing that one up. And it moves six to three, the score between these two teams at this point. So, 10th round, about to get into action here. And a bit of a warp and lag going on there, it seems. All right, so Adren moving forwards with the grenade there. That's a beautiful grenade to make. Love that play. Anyone can you know, copy that from Adren. All about timing and hitting the angle on the nade and spraying down the CZ-75. Picks off one player early here. That is very damaging. Here they go, rushing on through the ramp. No defense coming in from Nino. And here they are with the lower side secure. Smoke's going down. It's almost too easy for Exasana at this point. It's going to have to be an insane play from KGR and YNK coming in. He does manage to take down Dozier. Picks up the AK-47, which is a very important weapon for him to be able to make this comeback with. It's a 2-1-3. The bomb is down on the lower side. And YNK makes his way forwards. Kucha going to deal with KGR. YNK gets one, but facing three at once, not going to work. Exostana managed to pull through on this round. So six to four, the scoreline now. As we get another disconnect we see there from YNK. So he's having problems with his internet. So that's very unfortunate. And it appears like they have paused again due to this. So that is indeed very unfortunate. But again, as I, as I made the point before, I think everyone in Counter-Strike is very used to this situation whereby we have 
delays. And this is just another one of those. Hopefully, it's got nothing to do with DDoSing. We're seeing, you know, it's great at Valve to actually, they actually made an update recently trying to make it much harder to actually find IPs you know, onto the servers in the clients connected to the servers. I mean, to really prevent this, this DDoS situation that we've been having. Because it's, it's really interesting as well because the people DDoSing are also the people that are part of the community. And I don't know if they even realize that they are like actually taking an ax to the community and just like I don't know, hitting the community with this huge broad ax or something, just damaging it, making the community bleed because that's essentially what happens. It does make everyone's lives much worse. You can see so many players getting frustrated. I remember seeing a tweet, I think it was from, uh, from Devil not so long ago, where he was, he was saying that uh, you know, DDoSing is just ruining the online play in tournaments massively because of the skins bedding as well. I mean, there's, there's a lot of controversy. I think that's probably one of the biggest topics in, this, in the Counter-Strike scene. But of course, also, I am kind of which is coming up as well. I am really looking forward to seeing the results of that. I recently interviewed uh, Khan, which uh, should go up in the next couple of weeks. And uh, we briefly spoke about that and just talked about Fnatic and the team as well. And it really looks like Fnatic, Fnatic, after their performance at DreamHack Winter, they're really performing to expectation. You know, Khan was saying, you know, they're doing, they're doing really well. And with the results, like if you just look at the raw results, okay, they're not necessarily, you know, taking first in every major title or whatever, but they are hitting top threes and they're doing so, so well. And it would be such an interesting storyline if they actually go on towards, under the Pronax's leadership, actually take down that land. But of course, you've got NIP and Titan in there as well. And I mean, I think actually NIP and Titan are playing tonight as well on SL TV. I think Anders is covering that over at NIP TV. So, and it's doing a great job as always, covering all the matches. And looks like no, no uh, extra information on YNK here. So no idea how long this could take. I'm sure everyone knows how it is with, with internet. And yeah, so I, I also, uh, I talked a bit about the Faceit platform as well, but I can also talk briefly about the, the Overwolf app that some people probably saw. It's uh, an app developed uh, quite a long time ago, and finally they made like a little kind of implementation for Faceit on there. So you can install Faceit app onto the Overwolf. And that allows you to actually you know, use all the uh, cool Overwolf features whilst actually like having access to the, the website whilst in the game. So you can actually talk to admins and players, opponents and friends, and so on, and use all the overall features whilst you're actually inside the game, whilst you're playing the deathmatch. And if you're like full screen, you don't actually get any uh, frames dropping at all, which is something that surprised me massively. Um, if you, I think if you play windowless border mode, then you, you can have some issues with that, but full screen it works flawlessly, which is pretty impressive. And you can also like sign up for pugs and so on and so forth. So if you're one of those people who just likes to grind the deathmatch whilst uh, searching for games, that is for you, basically. And it looks like we do have YNK reconnecting to the server so we should be jumping into this once again very soon to see if Exostana are going to bring this back. It's actually coming into a very uh, close affair between these two teams at the moment. And looking at the, the scoreboard, we can see the money situation. It's really bad for Exostana. They really need, they really need to actually win this round. This is a really big round for them. I mean, both teams we can see, they're both having issues with the money here, so it's a big round for both teams. But as we can see, Exoson is really trading at this point. Gaming Pub, of course, playing the CT side, the favored side on Nuke. And you know, you'd be expecting them to pull you know, something towards the 10-5 scoreline. So if they're starting to get five or six rounds on the T, they are going to be happy. So things are going somewhat well for them at this point. So if they lose this round, it's going to kind of suck. It's going to hurt a little bit, but it's not going to be the end of the world. So here we go. Actually, Game Pop looks like they're going to be making a little bit of an aggressive push here. Three men with the pistols creeping on in through the radio room, through to lobby. And now they've realized what's happened. They're going to back away to a more more appropriate position to defend the onslaught that's happening outside right now from Exostana. Here they go. Not much to do with these pistols at this point in time, it seems, as Game Pub try their best, try their darndest, but it's just not enough. Dozier getting boosted up towards heaven. Going to take down a couple players with ease. It's just Joe Ninja left, and as Ninja as he is, can he really take down five with just a pistol? He's working on it. There's two. The problem is he cannot get to the guns. That's the issue for him. If he could get to a gun, maybe he could make something else happen, but... That's really the issue. And, that, and when you're playing anti-eco, you have to be very mindful of where weapons drop because a weapon dropping 
when 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 uh, let's say let's say the CTs are on the uh, on the eco, their priorities aren't necessarily to win the round. It's to do some damage and to try to maybe even save some weapons. The expectation is not to necessarily win the round. So weapons become a big priority. If you leave them lying around, that's some resource that they can actually use to save, go around and grab it at the end of the round and save it or whatever. But here we have a three farmer setup from Game Pub, who again hurting on that money. Nina's going to take down a Dren. And KGR working outside. So they have a lot of presence outside with these positions. And great little trade there, getting the revenge frag onto Angel. And a quick cleanup coming in from Game Pub there. So very well played from them to lock that down. We saw Exostana, you know, they, they do love these outside plays. We saw that again. But it was Game Pub who were able to actually out execute them in that, in that scenario. So another buy coming in from Exostana. And, but a couple of Galils in the mix. So let's see how they use this. Not many nades, only three nades. But at least they all have Kevlar and head armor. So let's have a look how they're moving here. We've got three moving outside. We've got a couple at the door area, or one at the door area rather. Spamming through. Good timing there from Markov, but not quite good enough. You can see Joe Ninja without head armor actually. One thing to note, just skipping the head armor. And he's not the only one. Emmy and YNK as well, skipping the head armor. You know, they know they're against AK-47s. Head armor doesn't help against the AK headshot. And YNK going to drop a Dren from the silo. Good play there. But his position is a little bit compromised. They know where he is. Problem is for him that it's quite a long run to that kind of safe area. So he's trying to do it in a very careful way there. And there you go. There's the danger. But it's just a deagle. So he's able to get away. YNK breathes a sigh of relief back into safety. Angel, though, compromised the ramp for the CT side. Game Pub are really hurting on that control over there. And Gold oh, Kuja coming in from behind here on the lower side. Going to find himself a Joe Ninja. And Emmy alone on the upper side. So things are getting really chaotic from the positioning of both teams at the moment. Kuja just sitting in the vents. Just patiently waiting. But the, the time is running out. 20 seconds for the plant. And Game Pub know this. There it goes. Hearing the sound cue there. Emmy going in, but Kucha's in his back. Gets the headshot. Two on one, actually. Kucha last man standing, but YNK with a point blank. Op shot to the back. Kucha goes down. He's going to get the defuse. Well played to Game Pub. Holding on, actually. And again, the 10 5 scoreline, that's something you're kind of looking for as, as Game Pub. So. They really need these next two rounds, against, uh, event, especially against Exostana. So eight to five. Let's check out the money again here. As we can see, somewhat even on the money front. But two rounds left. You don't want to be dropping this one or the next. Here goes YNK looking for the pick on the outside. Oh, he actually got the frag onto Kucha. Beautiful flick from YNK. Loving it. And that helps massively now. I mean, being a man down right at the start of the round, that really limits their options. And I love the smoke going in there. Even if they decide not to go uh, outside, they've really made the AWPers position compromise. He can't really easily look for information there. If he wants to try and peek, he has to be in a spot which is in between the wall and the smoke that's, that has visibility. And that's where the, the T's are going to be aiming. But YNK repositioning smartly, able to catch a sneaky frag onto Angel jumping on the roof there. So two players dropped already, just trying to wade through the outside area. Here goes Dozier, going to find himself... Joe Ninja, Serbian Ninja. Can't, what can he do? Here goes Dozier. Will he look the right way? Oh, and actually, Joe Ninja makes the error there. Unable to catch Dozier. That was his frag, but he's going to have Emmy clean it all up for him. And Adren, though, he's going to take the opportunity to jump into the vents for a party as well. And switching over to the AK. There's no bullets left there. And there you go. Emmy going to take it down for a 9 to 5 scoreline. You can see Emmy and uh, Joe Ninja topping it for their team. But YNK with the key frags that round, he's really the man that made that round for them. And so keeping that AWP alive, going to be looking to see if he can do that again here. Or RX Astana going to even dare challenge him after that. So jumping into the overview here, we 
can get a sense for the movement of both teams. Dozier is in smoke here. Where is he? Nobody knows. Just looking towards that ramp area. Nino is going to go in for the peak. And he does just cut down Dozy, the front man. The entry fragger going down straight away. There goes the Molotov. Just burning those players from Exastana. Adren, what are you doing? The team kill there does get Nino. Nino running in confused. What is even happening? And there you go. 10 to 5 the score there. So very, very strong. Well, decent, decent result from game pub nothing too extraordinary not as we saw in the first the first half of the first match we saw today where we had Exostana playing against the Wizards I don't know why they're called Wizards but that match is starting to make me feel like something magical is happening so let's see how this pistol round goes it's gonna be very interesting now always always cool to see what a team likes to pick for their opening around on the pistols and we, and we can see right here we've got Nino looking for that pixel just catch a head from Dozier. Dozier gonna try to re-peak him and look at this play between the two doing the dance and neither actually the worse for it. Emmy throwing the smoke and that smoke is gonna really not necessarily be confusing but it's it's going to prevent perfect information on the outside to put the question in the minds of the Exosana players. And there goes Nino again, trying to make this entry frag. Here he goes, but he gets dropped by Dozier straight away. Angel's on the case as well with Josier towards the ladder room. He's going to go up now. As it is clear, they're rushing upper. So that, pre that rotation from Angel wasn't the best. Angel trying to make good of it, though. Does spam onto YNK, gets him down. And it is the pistol for Exostana, which is absolutely direly required. And that's exactly what they're going to get. So 10 to 6 now between the two teams after the pistol. Of course, we're going to see the anti-eco SMGs come into play. Some rifles, pistol on Dozier. He wants to save up for that ever key AWP. And here we go. So right now... YNK, he's uh, on the outside there, as we can see. He's got the bomb. Doesn't really want to drop the bomb out there alone. But he, okay, it looks like he's not alone. He's got Joe Ninja. He's got his back. As his teammates are getting taken down over on the other side of the map. This is not great. Clock versus rifle at this range. Not the best at the PD-50 in the hands of his teammate, but still not going to be good enough. Game pub, a bit worse for wear in this round, but as you would expect... Anti-eco success. Bomb does go down though, actually. So that's a terrible result for for Exostana. They they shouldn't have let that happen. Very sneaky there from Y and K. Very sneaky indeed. A sneaky orper. That is that is always scary to see. But uh, the bomb does get defused, and we move into the next round as we see Exostana going up. One more, so they're trying to equalize it desperately now, but they're going to run into the rifles. Five AK-47s here for Game Pub. So let's have a look now as we move into this round. Again, Game Pub, very fragile on the economy, of course. They just bought up. If they lose this, it's going to be another eco for them unless they get a plant. And this, this buy is only just good enough because of the sneaky plant from YNK. So big props on his side of things. So just trying to feel out, trying to you know put out those feelers there to see what's going on position-wise. Wizards had a lot of success against Exostana with that kind of play, just you know, looking for the information, having the kind of idea of what play to what play could work, what could be good, but first getting the info before committing. And then finally they get the position to move in through CT main, grabbing a couple kills. And Emmy's on the case right now. Just Markloff and Dozier remaining. See their positions. There's Markloff. There's Dozier. Oh Markloff! 
going down, but Dozier's there to actually save him. Looking for that shot, and look at that coming in from Dozier. Coming out huge, he's got two more fracks to find with the AWP. Dozier's looking to do the impossible here on Nuke against his opponents, against GamePub. Things calm down a little bit as they are under a lot of pressure to get that bomb down. 15 seconds left, Dozier making the sound on the ladder. It's such a hard spot, and he's not going to have another opportunity for a shot. Nino takes him out, but two brilliant frags from Dozier. Not for saving the day for his team, but certainly certainly making my day. 11-7 to 7 on the scoreboard as we move forwards in this match. So here we go. AK's all around again. And do we have a pause or a lag? Which one is it? That's the question. So it seems like we're experiencing technical difficulties here. So as soon as I know what's happening, I will relay, relay that straight away to you guys. But it seems as if the game has frozen. It has frozen, it seems. Could be GoTV. So we're just we're on that. We'll get you guys information as soon as we possibly can. And we'll sort it out. So <laughs> there you go. Got to love, gotta love online gaming. You, can't, you don't really have these issues when it comes to, to real sports. Like you don't, if like someone's playing tennis, they don't suddenly start lagging or something and just you know, mid-swing have to pause the game. It doesn't, doesn't happen in tennis or something. Although we do have the benefit in like esports, which is really cool that you can like, you, for example, this would be a problem in tennis. Let's say it's raining or something. Oh, it sucks. It's raining playing football. Oh, the it's really slippery now. So it, it is, it is paused. Um, but yeah, we we do have things to be thankful for. Of course, we have have the problems that come with technology, but we do have many things to be thankful for. And these aren't really problems we have much on, on LAN either, which is part of the reason why LAN is, is really the true testing ground. You know, you, with LAN, you know that, that you know, there's no foul play, or there should be no foul play, you know, referring to cheating and so on. I mean, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen anyone successfully pull off cheating at a LAN. Not that I know many people who have actually tried to do that, because that is, I mean... You have people around you watching you. It's not really, not really going to work, is it? It's not really going to work. So uh, that does remind me on the, on the topic of cheaters. I know a lot of people. Um, oh, they're going back. Here we go. <laughs> All righty then. 11 to 7. And I love the moonwalking going on here. I love that bug. So Joe Ninja showing us the ninja moves there. But, ooh, Marklov feeling a couple bullets there. Gonna run away. He can run pretty fast for a guy that just took a few bullets in the leg. Seems to just shake it off as if it's nothing. YNK gonna take down a Dren. And things slow down once again. We do have the pistols, of course, for Existana. So, and they didn't commit to, let's say, a stack somewhere or a rush or anything. So it's just a standard. So they're just waiting for GamePub to kind of push into them, and they're going to hope to get lucky on, on the execution, get a nice headshot in you know, a Markloff, trying to be cheeky with the Deagle long range. I mean, that's, that's all this really is. And sometimes you do get those frags, and that's the amazing thing about pistol rounds is that pistol rounds can tend to be kind of chaotic because something happens that shouldn't happen, and then your team has to use their intuition, their experience in the game to react dynamically, appropriately to, to that situation and play it optimally. So there you go, GamePub finally just flipping the switch, charging up on into the upper site, and Angel drops three players in a row, wants the quad kill. And there's Nino though, he knows Dozy is there, peeking through the vents, Nino goes for it, Angel though, not to be toyed with, not to be messed with. 11 to 8 now, Exostana bringing this scoreline back. Piece by piece, they climb back. And you can see the AWP on Markov. Adren and Angel pretty rich. And looks like we had a player dropped for Exxon, but it, you know that was the pause situation there. Adren coming back in. And pistols for GamePub as they suffer on the economy here. And I really liked, I would just really like to see, and as we were talking about yesterday, more swarming with the pistols. We have, we have not seen today a team basically go, let's just go for it. And here, okay, there we go. We're just going to go for it onto Dozier, just swarm him. Dozier, great positioning, allowed himself the opportunity to fall back here. Angel trying to catch the players, getting those eco frags. Nom, nom, nom. Markloff there looking for the last two. That's what he's going to get. And everyone loves some eco frags. 
They taste so good. So here you go. 9 to 11. And things are evening up rapidly here on the second half between GamePub and Exostana. And for those of you who may be wondering, perhaps what some would have considered the most interesting match of tonight, Exostana versus Clan Mystic, that's actually happening after this. And after that match, the last one will be GamePub against Clan Mystic. And this is all the Group B for the GSL eGaming Bets Cup, where $2,000 is up for grabs. 1300 of which going to the first place. And here you go. Look at this. Look at this push through the smoke here. And that is why that position is so key by Angel. But it has such a huge risk. And they managed to get down Seeker just before the smoke dissipates to uh, you know, evade Markov's glare with the AWP. YMK and Joe Ninja looking towards Kucha here. And Kucha's going to take down Joe Ninja. Here goes the grenade. YMK with the follow up. Three versus three, but the health is not on the side of the Serbian team. Game pub. Gren just keeping it slow now. He knows that this is like he can be so fast down from this position to the lower site that this is a very effective position from the cover, especially as he doesn't have someone else up in the upper site. Markloff going to take the frag on YNK, gives the information to his teammates. Might see rotations coming in now. Markloff with the second frag, third one coming in on Tonino from Adren. So. Very well played there. Markloff, really a very key frag as they were rushing down secret on the outside, able to pick them off through the smoke. And again, you know, we saw that position on the, the, the dog walk, the kind of outer catwalk, if you will. That is the only position that can really, truly counter the, the guys who are running past, you know, behind the smokes towards secret. There's no other way to actually see over. You can spam through the smoke, of course, but it looks like we've got a very fast... A move from YNK. Look at this position here. They didn't expect that at all, but he, it's unfortunate he's unable to accomplish anything with it. And Joe Ninja getting caught out there. But yeah, it's it was very good of Markov to make that orc frag because that really shouldn't have happened. And being that man, like being a man down there, being two instead of three, as they would have liked to be, going into the situation on the lower on the lower site. Gives them much less options for taking frags back. Because you want two guys to go out the door, or two guys to be able to go through the vents, but, and one to be able to go out the door. You need, you need a, at least three people to kind of do that somewhat effectively without relying too, too much on luck. And they just didn't have the, the manpower to, to successfully do that. We've got an 11 to 10 situation on the scoreline now, as KGR tries to get this clutch started. But it's just one frag he'll be able to take before he falls. 11 to 11. And we tie up. So Exostana, you know, they're starting to bring it back. Bring it back. And can they close it down, though? Here we go. This is a very fragile situation. If GamePub lose this, they're going to have to eco next round. Unless they get the bomb down and a couple frags, they're going to need to eco next round, which will actually push Asana to a 13 14 kind of round situation. And stare at the glory that is the Asimov. Skins we're seeing from Kucha's M4A4 and the AWP from Markov. Wonderful stuff there. Love what the skin makers are doing these days. But looks like, look at this. Here comes the upper push coming in from GamePub. And the flashes are perfect from GamePub. It's just so effective. YNK is going to get that bomb right down. It's planted for main. Markov with that flick shot onto KGR. Kucha trying to creep through. Oh, I don't know if they know he's there. They don't know he's there. They finally spot him. It's too late. Emmy goes down. YNK goes down. Kucha is the man of the match right here just with this play for Exasana because this round can be the victory for them. But he's going to get taken out by Nino. So one on three situation. All on Nino right here. You see Nino going for the spray. It's going to be Angel to take him down. It's going to be Exostana to take the round and put GamePub in a very, very bad situation. They might just be able to scrap together a buy here. Okay, they can scrap together a buy. And it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was. So Exostana, they haven't quite done it just yet. But they're moving into a very good territory here. And 12 to 11. GamePub, great performance so far. That upper rush, very effective. You've got to really give them credit for really hitting those flashes on key. And here we go, Dozier. Oh my god, Y and K. Y and K. What are we seeing from him right now? As he goes huge with a third frag onto Adren. 
And there could be the fourth. He spotted the player. But there's one more near the window room that YNK might not find in time. You know, if he ha like, we can see that he bought no armor. He just wanted the orb. No armor. Here he goes. You're not planning to get shot when you buy an orb, and it's going to be Angel that does kill, Mark, uh, kill YNK. But that's the thing, though. He already did enough damage. Game pub. They can just run through now with a numbers advantage through Ramp. Of course, Exxon had to rotate through. Two players left, Pewter gonna drop KGR. As Game Pub go three to two now. So hopefully YNK's work is not wasted as Angel is unable to do anything and Kucha all rests on his shoulders for the clutch. And really that fast push outside from YNK, or rather fast catch outside from YNK. It's not something we've seen him do very often so far. And I feel like I feel like Existano taking outside a little bit for granted. So there you go, game pop evening things up actually. And you can see Existano, they're, they're fine on the money. Look at that. That's like 14k for Markolov. He's gonna be starting a trust fund momentarily with all that cash he's got in the bag. But that's gonna be another for the AWP. Another AWP in the hands of Markolov. AK's coming out for game pub. I wouldn't be too surprised to see another like like hard push on upper. And looks like that's actually what's gonna happen. There goes the grenade to blow open the door. And it could just be a bit of a fake. Or allow them to get those nades in to really confuse Exostana as they make a really fast push onto the ramp. And you can see there goes some great shots from Angel at range. Four francs he finds. He wants that ace badly. Where is Emmy? He's in the vents, though. Emmy, one versus five in the vents. And he's going to find a frag on to Adren. He's called the position. Does manage to catch a second. But there you go. Angel's defense on ramp was just phenomenal there. Stupendous defense, allowing his team to easily finish the rest off. And 13 to 12 now. So this is going down to the wire. We're going round for round at this point. As we have Angel getting a bit of a block right there. And and another one as well. A lot of man manly action there. Man hugs going on from Exercise. But here you go. Angel on the defense there for that aggression through ramp. It was just one player though. YNK just ran out. Joe Ninja just jumping. Just diving off that, that roof there. So this should be a pretty easy round here for Exostana. And they, they cannot afford to lose to Game Pub. They just absolutely cannot. They already lost to Wizards. Top two teams go through the group to make it to those two playoff spots, which will be played tomorrow at 6 CET. We go live. Of course, Kick and NIP already qualified. And the team, the only team we haven't seen here today so far is actually Clan Mystic on the stream. So I'm, I'm dying to see Kenny S. Love his aggressive orp, orping, his, his flick shots. It's, it's always gorgeous to behold. And here goes YK. Oh my god, he's been so on point. He's doing much better on the T side than he was on the CT side. That aggressive orping, moving into position. Getting the flick shots, the reaction shots, really working out for him. Future. Oh my goodness, he just found the bomb. If they can rotate quickly enough, they can just ignore outside and just set up the perimeter around the bomb and put, put in the defense. The Dren, though, going to catch Emmy quite quickly before he falls back. And here you go, the movement towards the bomb is going to happen. Y and K going to drop Angel as well. Two on three at the moment. And looks like Future is going to be sitting tight on upper there as YNK just pretty much holds his position in the yard. Those are moving towards that bomb as well. You know, spotted and the bomb goes down again. Those are good control, good patience. And YNK, there's just no way he can do this now. Oh my goodness, great shot from YNK again. Just catching these frags. He's just going to go for it. But one player on the close right, as we can see. But will YNK be able to react in time to that position? Oh, absolutely not. Dozier is going to drop him. So 15 to 12, Asta uh, Exostana Dragons are going to be finding themselves very, very closely winning this one if things continue in this way. Game Pub, though, they've shown a lot of character, a lot of spirit, a lot of 
ferocity in them. And let's see that. They've got an AK, Galil, Beagle in the mix. They're just going to go for it here. They know it's all on this. Got to play for that overtime. Doji gets smoked off there. So Angel is left to support him. Angel, you know, in a really good position to kind of either leave Dozier, just chilling over there, or, you know, if they get information, he can rotate to upper or even to, to the window room. So really, really uh, important position on Angel, that kind of floating spot. But he's actually going to go and lock down ramp here as Markloff looks into the yard. So one minute left in the round, and we're seeing GamePub setting up right now for this push onto ramp. Here they go. Nades shoot soon to follow. They've got quite a lot of nades. Angel looking back there. Great shot there from Dozier. They didn't see the rest just yet. They don't know that there's two more there. There goes the smoke, though. That's going to tell them. Angel came in with a great peek, but YNK gets the revenge frag. They're going to fall back, though. Maybe catch a rotation from the hut. Kucha is slowly edging his way towards lobby, but that smoke is there. He doesn't want to push through the smoke. Here he goes, smoke dissipating. KGR gets the frag, and now it's a two on three situation. Markov goes down outside to Emmy. KGR though gets a bit aggressive. They're running out of time, and that's going to be a GG's exchange. 16 to 12, the final score. Exosana Dragon is going to get themselves a win in the group, and it was a great showing from GamePub. They did a, a really nice job, but it wasn't quite as impressive as what Wizards did. Of course, the next match we have is Exosana versus Clan Mystic. That's coming up after the break, so stay tuned, guys, here on Face It TV. We'll be right back for that match.